Hi, it's Larry here of Xbox Live's Major Nelson here at Airtight Games for Xbox Wire. Now, it's always really exciting when you get your hands on a game for the very first time. Today, I got to do just that with Murdered Soul Suspect. Now, this is a detective thriller game where you play a detective that is killed and you have to solve your own murder from the afterlife. We got a chance to talk to the team. Let's take a look. I think Murdered Soul Suspect is a really original take on the concept of the true crime murder mystery. But in, in the case of our game, what if you died and now you had to solve your own murder? In the process of figuring out who killed you and why they killed you, you sink deeper and deeper into a, a, a mystery story. You take the role of one of Salem's best detectives who ever worked in the department, uh, you take away all of his normal natural abilities and you give him these supernatural abilities and you ask him to find ways to investigate crime scenes in completely new and original ways, ways that only he as a ghost would be capable of. It was interesting when we started developing this game and started asking ourselves, what does it really mean to be a ghost? What, what is the fantasy of being a ghost? What is, what is it that you want to do as a ghost? When you're walking through the walls, it suddenly becomes both uh, almost exhilarating and freeing, and it also becomes very disorienting. It's incredibly empowering for players, and it's also a huge part of that wish fulfillment of being a ghost, getting to peek into places that you wouldn't get to see otherwise. All right, boys. Place your bets and hope your luck improves. Just as Ronan is discovering this as he investigates this, so will the player. And one of the first things that they discover, and it's probably his most powerful tool, is his ability to possess human beings. And while you can't directly control human beings, you have some really incredible powers over them. You can look through their eyes, you can hear through their ears, you, you can influence their behavior very slightly, read their thoughts, things of that nature. Ronan. I think the player being a little lost is a good thing. Uh, I, I think it's fun for them to come into a space and go, oh man, I gotta figure this out. Because that's what Ronan's thinking as well. If the player comes into the space and goes, oh, I already know all of this, then it just, it's about going through the motions. But if you ask them to make some decisions, have, force them to do some lateral thinking, that aha moment, once they figure it out, it becomes that much more gratifying. A lot of our prototyping was around how do you make it interesting for the player to do an investigation and come to those conclusions themselves as opposed to just handing them the exact answer when you when you manage to gather you know four different things that you needed we have a mechanic uh, in the game where you you have to take complex thoughts and you have to organize them in a way that'll make sense to the character Ronan. Great example would be you need someone to think about something or you need someone to move in a particular way but you can't directly say, hey, move this. You have to basically put a thought into their head. So a, a witness in one of the crime scenes, she's too distraught to articulate what she saw to a police officer. But your own memory of a conversation that you overheard can be put into her head. And when you do that, it breaks free the data. And so she can think about it and she, you get this information in her own thoughts, even though she can't express it verbally. When we were brainstorming locations for the game, we, we, we first looked for places that had really deep supernatural history and lore behind them. And very quickly we realized that Salem's history worked perfectly for this particular story. And if the player takes the initiative, they're gonna learn a lot about this really rich world that we've created. There's all kinds of different collectibles. There's simple things like just finding a plaque on a wall. There's more complex things where you have to piece together fragments of a memory to get a total ghost story. And there's actually full-on side quests, which are independent investigations that don't help Ronan solve his own mystery, but will help other ghosts move on. If a ghost or a specter has unfinished business, they become isolated in this location. And until they can discover what their unfinished business is and comes to ter come to terms with that, they can't move on. And that's where the ghosts come from. Any spirit you find lingering in the dust is there because they don't know how to resolve their unfinished business. And as I mentioned before, if you're there too long, you become one of these demons.
I think the, the thing that we're most personally proud of is, is creating this really rich, complex world. Uh, something that we hope the players really want to get lost in, spend a lot of time in, learn everything that there is, find every nook and cranny. They don't just look at it like, oh my god, oh my god, I, where, is, where is the first fight? Where is the first thing I can shoot? I want them to like the character of Ronan, like what he can do, and, and just really be excited about this, our own kind of personal take on ghost lore. Because while ghost lore is sort of universal, I think our interpretation of it is really original, and I think people are really going to remember it. Get back here! I said, get back here!